Hello, 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 you absolute legends, and welcome back to the channel. It's John here with something a little bit different for you to see in the new year. Um, it's me talking about uh, my garage, my workshop. This is a project that um, my father and I built uh, f a few years ago now, uh, four or five years ago, um, and people have been asking me about it, and I thought it'd be good to do a quick video about it um, and its history and the project and the ins and outs and some people have garage envy I can only apologize <laughs> uh, but it is it is my little sanctum my space and um, yeah this video just uh, talks about how we built it what we've done uh, and documents its progress so back in around about 2000 and uh, 18, 17, 18, uh, this was my house. And this was taken with my drone. You can see that um, I have a garage. This is one that my dad and I built back in 2014. It's a double garage. It houses my MR2 and um, my Nissan Micra. Um, this space here is sort of like a pot or was a pondy spacey area and all this um was just grass i've got trees i've got a plum tree an apple tree and a big old bramley apple tree um which has been at the property for a very long time um i removed a lot of trees um after moving in there were some big leylandi all here some poplar trees here which were removed prior to me moving in but i've known the property for a long time uh, this tree has been removed bits and pieces as well. So, we've, And we've done some things all here since uh, the garden has all, all changed. But this is my house back in about 2018. And I've got my, two, my, my double garage. And for normal people, that would be enough. But I wanted something um, to house my collection and put something a little bit different in. Um, and I had lots of options. And this garage here is a drive-through. So we've got a door here and a door here. I could... Um, drive all the way through and I could have put a garage at the back here I could have put another garage along the back here um or the other option was up here um I consulted with Mrs John Keaton she's the boss and after doing lots and lots and lots of research um I found this website which is quickgarden.co.uk who provide um kits pre-made log cabins that you buy and then you assemble on site um and they are good quality they were good reviews and i spent a lot of time talking to the team there um so i ended up going for the biggest thing that they offered at the time which was this the triple wooden garage and it is nine meters long by six meters wide uh, and it gives you a 54 meter square uh base um this was not the price i can assure you that it was uh, more than half that at the time um so I ordered it and decided to get cracking. Um, these were the pictures from the website. Um, the product pictures show... They're all computer CGI mock-uped. They're not an actual product. But um, I read everything about it. It came with the doors. came with all the double-glazed double, double -glazed windows and doors and panels. And you could swap and change stuff. Um, and the basic kit, I think, was, was about five grand uh, when I bought it. They, they gave me some sketches plans here are the plans and the sketches um show you the height because of the height and the size uh i did need planning permission um which i had to apply for go through the rigmarole of that but no issue thankfully um so i had to get planning permission for that um but that was the only thing due to the fact of, of, of the, the footage space and where i wanted to put it um customers gallery as well uh I'm in there. Me and Bristol have managed to get our way in there, and we're the only people, um, maybe who have bought it or, or have sent them some nice photographs. Anyway, so I ordered it from this website, and they said, "Yeah, it's going to be about six weeks." Fine, not a problem. Um, then I had a problem that I needed to clear a site. So um, let's go through some pictures. This was the site um, of the uh, workshop at the time. My big old Bramley tree, Crystal's house. Uh, I had my little blue shed, um, and uh, you could see that that is sort of this area here on these photographs. Um, I did a mock-up from another photograph I took um, and marked out the spaces. In fact, actually, no, that's a lie. I did do that, but it's not here. 
this is actually part of the works taking place. You can see that the trees there have been removed, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, anyway, so we had to remove trees. My plan was to remove all of the trees, move the blue shed down, move Crystal's house down, have my workshop, and then have that whole space as sort of an utility area and, uh, and an unused space. Because it doesn't look big in this photograph. However, our garden is massive. Um, there's me, Mrs. John Coopland, and at the time, Crystal. We didn't have the cat. Um, and so we had a massive space here and uh, cutting these lawns after the apples had fell it was really a chore so we knew that we were going to take down the trees at some point anyway and it was a natural thing to um, build my workshop after we'd taken the trees down obviously so after many 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 trips to our local tip um, with uh, branches twigs and bits of stump using dad's faithful 406 um, the trees came down. So this is um, one of the apple trees, the eating apple trees. Uh, just sticks and bits and pieces. You can see that I've moved Crystal's tree down. because We had to sort of shuffle everything down. So I had to take a tree down, shuffle down the building. Take a tree down, shuffle down the building. And the way we did that was we um, got some jacks and uh, some wheels. And we actually jacked up Crystal's house and uh, put some ply boards underneath it and some big... Know, milk trolley wheels and we wheeled it down the garden um and you can see i had an old shed here uh, which was absolutely posh rotten so we gave that away actually on the facebook and somebody came and took it and they were um, happy with that you can see the ground and the and the grass as well as being a bit churned up um but this is when we've taken down the, the plum tree the apple tree and this is the bramley apple tree that's on the way and crystal's house then gets moved down um, this was an interesting one to do. We took most of the branches off and then Dad tipped it over using an engine winch and logs as ballast. Um, it took a long time to get that out, but once it came out, it just went down. Uh, there it is then. That is the root of the Bramley tree. It's a shame we lost our Bramley tree because it had been there a very long time. But as I say, it was a bit of a nuisance. We didn't use the apples. We used to give the apples away. Um, and people are saying about the uh, people were at the time saying about the wood here. So we had a few people um, that I put on Facebook saying, "Hey, look, I've got loads of wood. I've taken all the sticks to the dump, but I've got loads of wood. Would you like it?" And the amount of people who wanted my um, my wood <laughs> uh, was unbelievable. So that's gone to a good home as well. People using that, which is good news. And I kept some bits of the wood, and it's in our front garden um, as sort of a display, which is useful. Um, right, there's Mrs. John Keaton. Not sure what she's doing there. She looks like she's filling that hole in because a massive, massive hole was dug to try and tip the Bramley tree out. There she is filling it back in. There's Crystal helping. Uh, yeah, so we fill the hole in and we get the ground nice and level. And then Dad and I managed to find ourselves so much rubble and rammel. We actually went to our local uh, Juicens building centre and said, hey, you got stuff you don't need? And they went, yeah, take it all. So uh, big shout out to Juicens, who've now suddenly closed. But uh, they, um, they gave us all that stuff. And that rammel went all in um, here. So Dad will be able to tell you how thick the concrete is but i can assure you it's thick um and it is substantial it's not going to crack so we built it in three bays one two three three meters by six meters and the and, and so um it gives us some leverage and some room and uh that is the shuttering going in there for the first bay what else have we got going in here so i had one of these which was like a uh a Chinese ornament. You can't see it from this side, but it's got a great big hole in it where it fell over in the wind. So that went in, that went into the garage project, and I hired a whacker plate um, to whack down all the uh, rammel and bits and pieces. So the plan was to get the shuttering all in, the rammel all in, and then do the concrete um, pour. Uh, one slab at a time we couldn't hire a uh, concrete pump and a concrete uh, ready mix 
two reasons at the time. One cost, it was going to cost me over a thousand pounds. And I didn't have that money at the time, in all honesty, because I'd paid for it all uh, on my garage. And it was a big investment project for me. Um, and two, the logistics of getting that to the back of my garden um, was hard. Um, so we decided we was going to do it ourselves. I think I ended up with over 25 tonnes of bath and sand. And goodness, I cannot tell you how many um, cement bags we bought. I cannot tell you. But we shifted it all. This is one of Mrs. John Cooton's duties. Uh, she was on sa depressing sandwich and cheap crisp duty. Um, she must have got through so many uh, tea bags. So big shout out to her for that. Um, this is the electrical feed going in. I needed to put electricity to my garage. I needed to put an armoured cable in. So I had to take up a big slab of concrete and we pushed it up um, the cavity and into the loft and then uh, uh, with a special armoured cable. Um, Dad is an electrician, by the way, so he's allowed to do that. Um, and uh, we, we've connected that in the loft. And these are the slabs. The slabs have been poured then, um, as, as if by magic. I wish that it was that quick, uh, but it took us blooming ages. I think we were doing a, a slab a day um, but with the weather that was going on and other bits and pieces and logistics in between, we had to uh, do that. And you can see it's not the best at the moment. We've just poured it, but um, it's it's quite nice. And Dad's put some uh, fluting around the edge here. There it is then. There's the concrete base, part one, because we were going to be putting more base work in. Um, there's a pipe in here. This is where the... Um, I don't know what the word is I want. The electric cable comes up and I had to dig a channel here and that is then down in the ground. Um, and it's a lot deeper than that, don't worry. <laughs> and that is just the initial top bit. But that uh, that cable is sunk inside a, inside like a big metal tube deep, 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 deep down in the ground. Oh, here's Mrs. John Cooperman then breaking up some more rammel because we've poured the concrete um, footings for the garage but then i needed a needed ramps um in and we were going to build sort of a patio area to the left hand side and mrs john Cooten wanted a um little garage on the side as well where she can put all her washing machines and stuff like that and freezers so we built that but that was uh, done sectionally there she is then uh looking uh dashing she's going to kill me for that one uh but she's breaking up her um bricks and she's actually got a hair mask in uh, in this picture, so um, she was uh, doing some sort of beauty mask while smashing up bricks. And you can see that it's taking shape now. Uh, we removed some of this path because I wanted to get my cars in and out. out. And, and we're starting to pour the ramps here. Um, and uh, there's another piece going on here, which is where Mrs. John Cooten's shed was. You can see that we've moved down the blue shed and the garage uh, and Crystal's house, sorry. Um, and we're going to be putting in another piece of concrete here to uh, round that off. There's Crystal looking happy then because her the blue shed is in place. I built a concrete base for that. Uh, and these extra blue bits are wood that I replaced because it's gone rotten. Um, and then this is pre-painting it. And you can see that we'd use boards, as I say, to, to move it. These are old slabs that we were using as rammel. And this is where Crystal's house previously had sat. And then the garage turned up uh, on a 44 and a half ton wagon uh, on my little country road in Lincolnshire. <laughs> and there it is, the man delivering it um, with a Moffat um, trailer tractor thing. Uh, picked it all up. It was all contained in these two packages. And he dumped it on my front lawn. Oh, sorry, three packages. And dumped it on my front lawn. So I had to handball every single piece of this garage from here, which is my front garden, around the back and stack it up uh, into pieces. And you can see all the pieces are organised here. These are all offcuts. There's so much offcuts of wood, and we've built some great things with that. Um, you can see my uh, wooden gnomes as well, uh, or dwarves. I think they're dwarves. Um, windows, doors. And this is all the garage, all these pieces 
our uh, pieces of the garage and you can see that we've started to organize it there and actually that afternoon we started putting it together so we got it all round we organized it and then thought Do you know what let's start putting it together and it is like a big lego piece big piece of lego um everything just slots in there were some uh, instructions that said right this is piece one two three four five six seven eight or a pieces now slot this and this there's a big wooden um base plate here that you screw into the ground and everything is attached to this you don't screw these pieces together you only screw these pieces into the base plate and everything else is held down by its own weight so this is day one um and that is as far as we got uh in about two days two or three days so we got we started putting everything up and obviously there's not many pictures because we were just cracking on. And by the end of sort of day two, day three, I think, I think it's day two, day three. Yeah, day two, day three, we'd got the majority of the framework up. No doors on, obviously. These roof purlins in. And we'd started to build this little side shed um, for Mrs. John Cooten's bits and pieces, which actually is brilliant. Um, I keep everything in there. Uh, so you can see it's starting to take shape. This is day two. This is putting the roof on. Uh, this is inside. And every single roof board, you would have thought that it would be boards, right? Like OSB boards. Uh, no, this is the roof. All these little interlocking pieces. So there is uh, Dad uh, trying to start it off, get it all level clamps and screws and all sorts of stuff and every single one of these boards had to be nailed to the roof which was done so uh the doors have started to go on here windows are in really easy to put in literally you put the window frame in and slot these on it just screws together and it sort of holds itself in place there's me on the roof uh after nailing all of these um boards in by hand i hasten to add and um, because a nail gun would have been too powerful if i'm honest so we nailed all of these boards in by hand uh there's the view from the roof and you can see the the existing garage here um it's an rt shot isn't it some wood shavings and there's Mrs. John Coupland uh, on her knees there trying to do some painting. So you can see that the roof has gone on now. Um, we have felted it with high-quality roofing felt. You could have, We could have put tin on. We could have put tar on. We could have put lots of different things on. I like this stuff. I rate this stuff. Um, it's easy to repair, and it's relatively cheap, 30-odd pound a roll. Um, and the end capping things have gone on here as well so it's watertight now and so there's a proton in there of course there is uh you can see that we've started to paint it the externals have been painted this face here this face here this side here i used a barn paint it's called bed b deck or bay deck barn paint it's like a flexible paint and it needed a quite a few coats but it's fantastic uh, so we've started to fill it full of all the bits and pieces. I've got all my racking here along the back. These are full of parts now. Um, I've got fencing up here because I fenced off uh, the back the back wall. Um, and proton signage as well. During this project, I decided to buy half a proton garage. Um, that is a proton sign. It does light up. There it is. Proton tool boards as well. And there it is, pretty much uh, finished nearly. Um, oh, you had a sneak peek there. So this would have been September, the September time. I've got the lighting in. I've got some decorative lighting on the front and the sides and the inside, of course. Some privacy screens, stickers on the glass here. Uh, my fence is up here as well. I've got my fence up. And you can see that most of the doors are painted. And then guess who turned up? It's only my old friend Steph from iDriver Classic, isn't it? Uh, so she turned up and she did some videos with uh, both my Black Knight, 
and her uh, and the uh, 1.5 se le and they are on her channel if you haven't seen them the black knight is a, a, a massive favorite with uh, people in the community ah uh, that's the back sorry that's the side um it's all graveled down here as a soak away that's the front and that's it that is my garage that's part one because i'm going to do a tour Later on uh, this month, where we talk about how it has evolved, how living with it has evolved, and what I'm using it for. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like. That really helps the analytics. Please uh, give me a subscribe if you've not subscribed. Um, and comment, you know, uh, what would you have done differently? Would you have done anything differently? Um, are you a fan? Do you like it? Do you like what we've done? Or uh, would you have chosen something different? How would you have used the space? Um, until next time, thanks for watching. I know it's been a, a long old video. What are we at? We're at sort of 20 minutes. Um, but uh, I could have split it into two, but I thought while we're in the flow, we might as well do it all in one go. Until next time, then, if you're not following me on Twitter, not following me on Facebook, please do. It's at John Coopendor, one word. Um, and uh, be safe, be good to each other. You're absolute legends. And I'll see you again. Bye bye.